terms of where I'm going to go today in talking about New, uh, Newcastle and talking about cities, um, cities are made by the actions of lots of people who take it upon themselves to do stuff. Cities are not made by people who drop them from on high or people who, uh, who you know, it's not, they're not purely made by people who have lots of money to invest or big decisions that are made at the grand, grand scale. They're made by the collective efforts, um, efforts and actions and imagination of lots and lots and lots of people. So I grew up in Newcastle. I have been living in Melbourne for the last 10 or 12 years and I came back in 2008 and I think I was just gutted by how bad the city was. So in 2008 I just walked one end of Hunter Street to the other. All of these red dots were empty buildings on Hunter Street in 2008. So in 2008 we started a not-for-profit company called Renew Newcastle and what Renew Newcastle does is basically we borrow buildings from their owners while they're empty so we can lend them to people to clean them up and fix them up and try stuff. Um, we've done 160 projects. Um, there are 60 built. So this is the map from 2008. That's the map from about six months ago. Every single one of those green dots is a building that's been cleaned up, fixed up and activated by Renew Newcastle that is no longer empty. It's commercially tenanted now. So um, I come to this question of renewal probably looking at it almost from the reverse angle to what everyone else is looking at it from. Uh, most people who look at renewal and revitalisation look at the top down. They look at, they look at plans and maps and drawings and height limits and guidelines or whatever. I look at people. I look at what do people want to do and how do we allow them or enable them or help them to do it. As you plan for the big scale stuff to either plan in such a way that enables the small scale stuff to thrive and survive or to plan in such a way that makes it almost impossible. But it is so much harder to fix these things after you've frozen them and broken them than it is to think about them while you're developing and designing them. So it's possible to have um, both um, uh, active, uh, engaged, used spaces as well as not lock up the public domain, not lock up space or take it out of the public domain forever. And I think that's part of the strategy that we should embrace going forward. So this is, you know, sports facilities and uh, bars and restaurants and cafes and spaces and parklets and things that are created out of um, temporary space whilst bigger decisions are taking place or whilst um, other things are happening. Everything, everything in it, all of these pictures can be picked up and moved and taken away. Uh, from, from gardens to restaurants to cafes to food carts and temporary structures and whatever that guy's doing. <laughs> Um, transition will need its own strategy. So regardless of where we're going to get to, um, it's not going to happen tomorrow. It's still 5, 10, 20 years away, some of the things we're going to talk about today. So what we do between now and then is important. We can't, one of the mistakes I think Newcastle's made for a long time is that we put the future on hold while we try and make up our mind about what the future's going to be. And I think one of the things I'm proudest of with Renew Newcastle is, for, is that um, we haven't waited for other stuff to happen. We've done stuff today, tomorrow, the next day, and the day after that. It's not perfect, it doesn't solve everything, but we haven't allowed ourselves to be frozen while we waited. And I think the key message is about how do we make the small scale stuff and the big scale stuff work well together. Um, often the de debate is framed as big development or doing nothing. And the reality is there's lots of shades in between those two. Well, so many people that really do want to see Newcastle as the capital of the hunter again and the hunter standing as a region in its own right not as a second city to Sydney and not as a region to New South Wales it's its own outright region to the world. To have something I guess to attract people just to come to Newcastle for being Newcastle. I still think we're not recognising ourselves as a tourist destination yet. We still think we're a working class, heavy mm -hmm. industry. I like the water park idea around um, Newcastle. I mean, we've got our great beaches, but to be able to access them when the weather's not so great and maybe open up the harbour to, for some sort of water recreation. idea of the university campus incorporating high schools and preschools is also very good. Having free Wi-Fi spots. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, encouraging more cafes, more small, small businesses and so on. They all look good to me, mm -hmm. yeah. The smart thing to do now when we're thinking about an urban renewal strategy is to build on what's already here in Newcastle, what's great, and really making that even better. So Newcastle is one of the oldest established cities um, in Australia, and um, prior to um, the European settlement of the city has a very long history of occupation. The other natural feature of the city 
the water edge, so the ocean as well as the harbour. Um, similarly, there's a great heritage fabric um, throughout the city. This map simply shows in grey all of the heritage buildings of the city, clustered primarily in the east, but then spread throughout the whole city. And then at the smaller scale, or the more personal scale, there's some really fantastic things happening in Newcastle. And it's all of those little special moments, the work that Marcus and his team have done with the community, the, the small pieces of public art, the Hit the Bricks program, all of those things are, are an amazing part of Newcastle. And we think these are the things that should be embraced and built upon and celebrated. What I'll show you is just a few of the ideas that we've started to generate. So looking at the harbour front today, in some ways is a really successful and really functional area. It's, it's primarily opened up to public access. It has pedestrian and cycle movement, has a number of things that attract people to the harbour front. The question for you all to consider next is what could make it even better? How do we take something that's working well already and to make it even more fantastic? What kinds of buildings, what kinds of uses um, is it more cafes? Is it better cycleways? Is it ways that people can get closer to the water, possibly even touch the water? How could those things reinforce that harbour front corridor? Um, and then thinking about Hunter Street. Again, really um, great elements. Beautiful heritage buildings, which are probably um, not in the best shape, could do with a little bit of um, rejuvenation. Great landscape character, some activity around shop fronts and other uses. What could it become? How could Hunter Street be the number one street in Newcastle? The urban boulevard, the multimodal corridor with light rail, cycling, pedestrians, as well as car movement. How can all of those things be accommodated within that street corridor? The big opportunity in Newcastle now is to think about the north-south connections that run through the city. I really didn't know what, what to expect today. Uh, but, yeah, it's been quite eye-opening and, and listening to different uh, the politicians, uh, different people that are in designing of uh, places all around the world, I guess. Um, yeah, it's opened my eyes to a lot of different, different outlooks and what could be possible. Yeah, I, I think it's been terrific. Uh, a big range of people, from young to old, uh, different uh, walks of life, plenty of people. Uh, lots of ideas that I hadn't thought about. Yeah, we're hearing what other people are singing too and you don't feel so silly if you think something and hear about 10 other people say the same thing. 40 years ago Newcastle was a thriving place but its heart got chopped into several pieces and spread out into the suburbs. So now we have a CBD with no heart. So we have to put that heart back into the CBD. If we want to build a community, it's not about buildings, it's about trust and compromise. I think it's also really important to keep, uh, to make sure that we think about how the city's going to work at the small scale and not simply design, you know, grandiose visions for, for um, kind of get dropped in from on high. No one person has the, all the wisdom and the imagination to, to, to know what Newcastle could or should be. So there's a great range of people and a great range of perspectives in the room and I've already heard people, you know, offering up things I've never thought of that, you know, of course, yeah, that's such a great idea.